Hello guys, Mr. Dandamon2050 here, welcome to another video. In today's video guys, I'm going to be showing you how to build your own gaming PC. Now on the weekend I did build mine and I did a little bit of filming with my cousin, so we have some footage to show you and yeah, I'm going to show you how to build your own gaming PC because personally I think gaming on PC is better than on console. And that's quite, you know, ironic considering I came from the 360. Anyway, these are some screenshots as you can see, look, the just the screenshots, you know, you've got Battlefield 4 there, you've Battlefield 3, so you've got like Call of Duty Ghosts, all stuff like that, and also SimCity, which is just amazing. Anyway guys, we're going to start off with telling you, you know, a little bit about each part, and then, uh, yeah, we'll get on with building it. It's going to be a three-part series, guys, this should be all under 15 minutes, and the link should be in the description, uh, for the playlist that is. So first of all, guys, this is the i5, I chose the i5. Uh, 3330 is a 3 gigahertz processor. There's the stock cooler I've got in my hand. So, yeah, it's, it's a 3 gigahertz processor and turbos to 3.2. I'll be doing a little bit of overclocking on this. People be like, Woo, down overclocking with a stock cooler. Yes, I will be doing that. Uh, I know exactly how overclocking goes. I've overclocked quite a few chips in the past, so I know how they all run. Now, this is the hard drive in some pretty funky packaging. Um, it's like, it was like some kind of weird foamy stuff, but it wasn't foam, it, it was like air, it was really weird, but that was a, that was the one sorry it had drive, a Seagate Barracuda, um, yeah, so this is the optical drive, uh, just a standard optical drive, LG. there's not much to say about them to be honest, the big optical drives, they don't really do much considering their size and the noise they make, so that's about it, just going to put that down there, don't that. Now, Moving on, uh, Windows 7, you obviously need an OS, this is the OS I have chosen, I particularly do not like Windows 8, so Windows 7 is the way to go, and plus, um, you know, miles more programs are compatible with Windows 7. Next up, guys, here's the PCI Express uh, wireless adapter, this allows me to have Wi-Fi on my PC, so I'm actually upstairs in the attic, so quite frankly, uh, yeah, you won't exactly see me running a wire from all the way from downstairs to the top floor, so yeah, the adapter, that's a CD of all the drivers. That's a, a bracket if you prefer the small bracket in a small case. You've got two antennas, and then you've got the card itself, and it's um, it's an um, anti-static bag. So that is about it. So put that back in there. Moving on, guys, this is the motherboard. I've chosen the Gigabyte motherboard. Uh, this one has USB 3, so that's all good. Uh, as you can see on the back, there's a load of graphs to say it's better than all the so-called competitors. And uh, yeah, so there's a disk with all the drivers, the utilities, all stuff like that. We have a front, uh, not front, a back plate. <laughs> we have two SATA cables. I did open this box before, so that's probably why that looked like that. So there yeah, two SATA cables coming handy for connecting your hard drive and your optical drive. So you don't need to buy any. Um, and then you've got your motherboard itself, again in some wrapping. This doesn't actually look anti static, but we leave it there. There's a socket, RAM sticks, everything. It's, it's a motherboard, guys. That's basically the foundation of your PC. Now put everything back in there, don't need that. I uh, just closed the box. Now moving on guys, we have this graphic card. This is the GTX 760. I wanted to go with a GeForce card because typically um, the run cooler, uh, they're a lot quieter and I particularly like um, Nvidia GeForce cards because they run better in the editing program I'm going to be using to edit this, um, yeah, this actual video even, Sony Vegas Pro. That's what I use. Um, so this is inside this box. You get another box. Um, this one's meant by MSI this card. So that's pretty nifty. Uh, I will be looking to overclock this card uh, quite a bit. Um, but uh, nevertheless, this card. Um, since I'm kind of you know talking over this video that was recorded, uh, uh, this is well the actual graphic card can deliver ultra on and of every single game. So there were just some cables, there's some cable ties. Them cables guys are actually 4-pin um, to 6-pin connectors, um, so that's all good. You, you get a, um, an actual quick user's guide, which no one really cares to read about. You get an adapter, it's um, yeah, UGA to DVI. Uh, yeah, DVI, yeah. It's a real strange connection type DVI, but oh well. And then you get a disc. More discs with outdated drivers, don't need that. That's empty, and the graphic card guys should be in here. So this is the GTX 760. So it's a new card. It's the um, the 700 series card. So that's all good. So just taking it out of the wrapping, might as well. Pretty big, as you can tell. Got a blower type fan there, but it's all the hot air out of the back. Better for overclocking. Some people may disagree, but you know, feel free to disagree. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the bulk of my build, I suppose. I'm just going to go over some 
few more uh, components. Um, so just gonna put that back in the bag, and yeah. So that's graphic card, guys. That's going to deliver some really good performance in games and stuff like that. Now, just cutting the video there. This is the power, su the power supply I'm currently using. This is the Corsair CX600. It's a 600 watt power supply. It's non modular, so you get loads of cables, but nevertheless, we've got a nice case. That's so good. You get some weird gel things to keep it all cool. You get the power supply unit and a shit ton of cables, literally. But uh, yeah, so it's a CX600. Got a real big fan. Um, lots of cables, but um, you know, it's a power supply. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, you're always going to get cables, but you need them to power all, all your components inside, so that's all good. So, there we are. One thing a lot of people do is actually mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. to actually um, knock the side, see if it sounds like a tank or something like a really cheap, uh, really cheap piece of plastic. This one does sound okay. You can't actually hear the sound for this, uh, but anyway. So this is the case I've gone with, lads. This is the... I can't actually remember the name of this. The specs will be in the description. Um, so yeah, this case... I chose this case because of the fact it's got USB 3. It's got an acrylic side window so you can kind of look into your PC. And uh, yeah, now... Um, there's just some bracket kind of things. I don't really need them. Um, so down here we have a load, a load more cable ties for routing cables. We have actual... Ah, right. Okay, so, so we have them. Uh, some, some screws, that's always good. Let's see what we're getting here. I think we should get a lot more brackets in here for hard drives and optical drives. Uh, hopefully, I don't actually think this case does use uh, these kind of things for the actual optical drive because the actual loading type style on here is a little bit different. Um, so they're what you call thumb screws, really good. You get a little speaker which we'll get onto installing in a little bit. Into here now onto the actual build, guys. So seven minutes into the video, and yeah, we're going to begin building it. So this is the power supply, lads. What you want to do is just throw all your cables behind there. So I'm just put a bulk there. Let's pick up a few, few more cables. Um, let's move the case back a little bit. So yeah, just push all your cables behind he here. You don't need them at the moment, so just push them all at the back. Same with all of these, so I've got like the real big cable and the 24 pin motherboard connector. So just shove them all at the back and you'll see why in a little bit. So you don't want all your cables in the way. So you push all them down there and then you want to mount your actual power supply at the bottom. You guys can put the fan facing up or facing down, I'm not too fussed, but because my case has vents on the bottom, the fan will be facing the bottom, meaning hot air will be blown out of the bottom of the case. I don't really want hot air in the case, that would be a little bit silly. So yeah, that's gonna be, Blowing all its hot air out of the bottom of the case, and I'm quite happy with that. It's also got ventilation at the back as well. Now you want to mount this in with four screws. Um, the screws would have came with, with your actual case. Um, just make sure you don't use the motherboard screws because they're, you know, you want to kind of hold on to them. So, so here we are, we've got some screws here. Let's put them on the carpet there. Um, a lot of you guys are like, Dan, why are you building a PC on the carpet? Quite frankly, there's limited space in terms of where I can build this. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, you don't, you just got to make sure that you touch the side of your case to um, get rid of the uh, static from your body. But nevertheless, nevertheless you know, you're always touching the case and stuff like that, so it's okay. So the first screw went in, here's the second screw. Um, all we really need, guys, for the actual build is a screwdriver. Uh, building PCs these days is relatively easy. And uh, yeah, you just need a screwdriver and a little bit of knowledge, often which you'll gain from watching this video. Um, building PCs is fairly, fairly simple. I've built one before. This one that you're watching is my well, this one that you're watching is my second build. Um, I've actually built a few PCs at college as well, so you know I suppose I can kind of say I built about four PCs, but uh, yeah, they're relatively simple. So just skipping that forward, we're going to move on to the hard drive. So this is the Seagate Barracuda, so one terabyte hard drive, and you want to mount it into the case. Now, as you can see, you got these clips, and you want to get two of these and mount them to each side. Some cases don't need this kind of mounting mechanism, and simply you know you can they can just slot in or even screw in. A lot of the older, um, older and shall say cheaper cases, um, your hard drives screw in. With this case, you put them on these brackets, which are really, really tight. Um, so it's got like, you know, you got like compress them against the floor to get them on. You're probably thinking, then you are squishing your hard drive. It'll be absolutely fine. It's better than the metal. So I think they're on. Um, let's just press that in a little bit more. Ah, there we are. Really difficult to put on these, they really are, but it's uh, secure when it's in your case. So as you can see, you've got two bendy clips there, and you want to put that in here. Now you can choose where you want to put it, um, I think. So there's three slots there, so you can fit three in there. I'm going to slot mine in that middle one there. So uh, let's just tilt the case a little bit. 
Um, so like, there's the hard drive, it goes into the case just about there, push it in and it'll go clip, and so clip in there and be nice and secure. Now onto the optical drive lads, um, as I said a big device I don't really do much apart from install your drivers and your OS. Uh, you play DVDs, but, re but who really plays DVDs? I'm quite confused with it. <laughs> so this case has two clips that you've got to push down, and then you can just slot it in like that. It's really simple. We will get on to actually, um, you know, screwing this in and getting all the data um, to the actual um, hard drive and the optical drive later. Uh, I'll just show you here, screwing the uh, screws in. So it should be one on one side and one on the other. Uh, depending on what case you've got, there might be two on each, but uh, this one is one. So uh, yeah, I will get on to actually showing you how to power and also um, you know get the data cables to, to the uh, drives and stuff in a little bit later. Now that was the i5 just did add in my hand. These are the cables, we'll use them later. And uh, so yeah, we've got the back plate, the driver disc, which will be all outdated by now. And then we've got the motherboard. In this part of the video, guys, I'm going to show you how to actually put a CPU and a cooler onto the motherboard. Um, so yeah, yeah, so you want to get your box, turn it upside down and you want to get your motherboard out of the uh, the wrapping and place it down on the box. There we are, nice and simple. So this is the i5. Uh, they come in really flimsy kind of packages these days, but they're pretty secure. It's quite thick plastic, so I'm okay with that. This is the cooler, an Intel stock cooler. If any of you want to buy aftermarket coolers, feel free, but I won't be showing you how to mount them in this video. They're fairly simple and they do come with instructions, so you know, feel free to uh, you know, read them and you'll know. So you want to undo the actual socket there, you want to leave that black kind of clip on, the black um, protective thing, I don't really know what it's called, um, because that'll flip off once you put your CPU in. So this is the CPU, don't touch any of the gold parts on the CPU, and you should notice a triangle, so as you can see I'm just potting there with a triangle. My cousin kind of zoomed in here a little bit too far and it went out of focus, but uh, that's camcorders these days. So you get a triangle lads, and you want to match it up with the triangle that's on the motherboard, uh, well on the socket shot there. So you can see there's a triangle there. So that'll be about it. I'm just going to push that back open. There we are. So we're going to line it up. That's a triangle. So it um, goes in just like that. And then you want to pop it down. You, wanna, you will hear some crunching, guys. I will kind of, you know, say, say that. You will hear some crunching. Uh, it'll pop in nicely. And then the back thing will pop off. That black thing will pop off. That'll be it guys. Now in terms of mounting this cooler, basically this comes with a push pin design, a lot of people hate this design, but uh, the push pins lads, uh, you push them in and they kind of expand, but uh, please just make sure they're, they're pulled up and they're not expanded because once you put them into your motherboard it will break your motherboard if they're not actually uh, expanded, so just take it out of the wrapper, don't touch anything, just slot it on top there. So just place it on top nice and gently, just remember that your process is under there so you want to be extra careful. And then you'll have four kind of pins you can push in. So I'm going to push down them in like a diagonal kind of fashion. They're quite difficult to push down. You will have a click. So I'm clicking them two down now. So I've just heard two clicks. Sometimes you don't hear clicks. It depends on, on your motherboard. But and, um, you know, so you just want to press them down. Once you've heard four clicks, it should be it. But in case you, you don't, just keep pressing them down. It only goes a certain way. And as you can see on here, we've done it already and they have actually just gone through there, so that's all good. Once it's installed, lads, you should be able to lift the motherboard up by the actual cooler, and you'll be uh, yeah ready to move on to the next part. So next of all, guys, is actually installing the motherboard into the case. Now, you'll notice that there'll be some standoffs already in your case. These are usually gold um, gold screws that lift the actual motherboard uh, just slightly, well, actually raise it above the actual case. So, so your motherboard's not actually touching the case, it's touching it by six. Um, not six, but by nine standoffs, yeah. Uh, this is a small motherboard, and quite frankly, this is quite a big case for this type of motherboard. So, uh, yeah, I am just taking some of these actual screws out. Uh, you'll see on your, on your motherboard, there'll be about, there should be about nine holes on your motherboard, um, where the screws go in. I, I just used the tool here to actually get uh, the extra ones out that I didn't need, so I took uh, three of them out, you know, just to the right-hand side, so I didn't need them. I'll show you a shot of what they're like now, so as you can see, look, they're just gold pins there. Really small things, and they just screw into the actual case. Um, as a, you know, as I mentioned again, just to actually make sure that it isn't touching, um, you know, the actual motherboard. So yeah, so the case of the motherboard are touching. 
Now this is the back plate lads, you want to push that through the back of your case. These are really fiddly, I will kind of say that, they're really really fiddly and they're quite a bastard to put in but once you've got them in you will be able to um, yeah you'll be able to put your motherboard in and you'll be happy because it's uh, yeah, really annoying. So man's just about in now, you need to push in all the corners until you hear like a snapping noise and once it's snapped it'll be all ready for the motherboard. Anyway guys that's the end of part one, click on the screen for part two and uh, yeah, we'll continue with the build of this PC and get it up and running. Also guys, the music used in this video was from Logan over at techsandthecut.com. Check, check the music out if you are interested.